So let's continue from here. Krishna says that the energy of mind in this material nature is difficult to overcome. Only those who surrender to Krishna and you know who understand that Krishna is everything, they can overcome Maya. Maya will no longer touch them if they keep Krishna in their mind. But there are some people who will reject Krishna. Who are those? There are four kind of people, children, who will reject Krishna. Those miscreants who are foolish, you know, they are foolish. They say, oh my God, I don't have time. When I get up in the morning, I have to finish my homework and then I have to, you know, make my lunch. I have to help my mother. I have to go in the evening to play tennis. I have swimming class. I have music class. In the night, I have to complete my homework. I have no time for all this Gita and Krishna and all. Those are actually the grossly foolish people. They are not understanding that they must give time for their soul. And second kind of people who are the lowest among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. You know, they have become ignorant because they are so full of material desire. And who have atheistic nature of demons. You know, so Krishna says that it's an asuri mind who has a, who is atheistic by nature. They become atheistic because they cannot be humble to accept the power of God. Okay? And they cannot surrender to Krishna. So what are the four kinds of people? Four kinds of people cannot surrender to Krishna. One is the Moodha, stupid donkey. They will work for 18 hours in the day and they'll say, I don't have time for God. They are the most foolish Moodhas who don't have time for Krishna. Okay, because the human birth is to realize Krishna and they don't have time for that. Second is Naradhama, means fallen souls. Examples are Jagai Madhai, they are two people who are forever saying that there is, you know, uh, no power in the God's name. They don't believe in Krishna. Ravana, Hiranyakashipu. What happened to them? They fell prey to the lust. You know, they became lusty. They wanted a lot of women. Or Ravana wanted Sita and they become fallen souls and then they cannot accept Krishna. Third is, you know, the proud scientists. They are the Mayaya Paharta, means they are just the deluded. They feel that I know everything, I'm a scientist, and, and they feel very proud of themselves. And the fourth is those who are atheists who are actually Asur Bhav, you know. They cannot accept Krishna, they cannot accept. Their mind is so Asuri at that, at, you know, at that stage. Maybe later in the next few births they will accept, but now. They have an Asuri Bhav. So Krishna talks about four people who cannot surrender to God. Mudha, foolish, Naradhama, fallen, or those who are Maya, you know, in delusion. And fourth is Asur Bhav, those who have atheistic Asur Bhav. Four people cannot accept Krishna. Krishna knows that there are people like this. So they will be there. There's nothing to be surprised about. Krishna himself is saying. So, in this slide again, we have, this is from uh, Iskon Chennai uh, class which I had attended, the grossly foolish, lowest, deluded and atheist. These people will never accept Krishna. See how they are, you can see the donkey there working hard. Here you are so proud of people clapping into that world. Then you can see how this Asura is praying and getting powers and he's thinking, you know, um, that he is everything, he's too proud. So these are the different people who can't accept Krishna. So here there is a life lesson, children. If one has no time for spirituality and he is busier than God had intended him to be, Krishna doesn't want us to be all the time busy. He will give you your support and get you to do everything as needed. With every passing moment, children, in chapter 8 is very interesting. You will learn about the exam of life. With every passing moment, we are coming closer to death. All of us have to die one day. And our clock is therefore running in the reverse. And we are forgetting that if we don't do our duties to the soul, when we become very old, we will not be able to do it because, you know, our body will be weak, it will be diseased. So this is the time with every passing moment. Think of Krishna. Get some transcendental joy. Okay, children? So uh, who are the four people who become bhaktas? Now, Krishna first said four kinds of people who, are, who cannot act surrender to God. Here Krishna will say about four kinds of people who start surrendering to God and understand the joy and freedom you get once you surrender to Krishna. One is, is artho, means one who is in pain. 
when you have a severe pain, you have a disease, and you are you don't know any solution, you will Krishna, you will call out. Okay, for example, is Bhattacharya. You know, in Kerala, there was a very famous person called Bhattacharya who wrote the Narayaniam. The whole Bhagavatam he makes it condensed in the Narayaniam. So this Bhattacharya, what he does, he is he is having severe, you know, um, vadam. It's an it's a uh, it's a uh, what is that uh, in English? Arthritis. Have you heard of arthritis? So yes, the whole sir. bones and joints are paining for him all the time. And he starts praying to Krishna. Draupadi, when the sari is pulled out, she is in pain because you know they are insulting her physically. They are insulting her, and she preaches out, "Krishna, I am being insulted. My my body is being exposed. Please help me." She prays for the pain of being insulted so badly. Gajendra, have you heard of Gajendra story? Anybody heard of Gajendra story? No. no? Gajendra is actually a famous. Uh, elephant story in his previous birth he was a very great king but he did some some small mistake of insulting some rishi or something and gets cursed and becomes an elephant but you know his pure his all his pious uh, deeds which he accumulated as a king when he becomes an elephant krishna purposely creates a situation where a crocodile bites his uh, leg it's called gajendra moksha and the crocodile is biting his leg and not at all leaving it the blood is flowing and he's in so much pain he calls out and he remembers can you believe the elephant is remembering the shloka he learned in previous birth and krishna comes actually and actually he offers a lotus from that pond in which the you know the uh, crocodile had bitten him and he offers it and he says those prayers elephant is able to remember the prayer of previous birth in pain so one of the bhaktas are those who will reach out to krishna in pain second is those who want wealth surely you want wealth like dhruv maharaj you know dhruv we call him maharaj but actually he was a little five year old boy he went and sat on his father's lap you know the story of dhruva all of you know the story of dhruv dhruv you don't know dhruv no mom no oh, dhruv is a very famous story you should know Some Bhagwatam is a small five-year-old boy. Okay, his father was a king. The father had two wives, and the father was actually liking uh, was you know the younger wife was more beautiful. So he would spend all his time with his younger wife. Now Dhruv was actually the son of the elder wife, and he goes and he sits on his father's lap, and his younger wife pushes him from the father's lap, and you have no right to sit on your father's lap. Only my son can sit. You have to be born as my son only. Then you can sit. A guru goes crying to his mother. Now his mother is you know person who is very accepting and pious lady. She tells guru, you know it's sad. You know it's your karma. You were born as my son, and now you know you if you the only person who can save you is Krishna. And then guru goes. You know he says if you go to the forest and chant Krishna's name, maybe God will help you. I can't help you. So he goes into the forest, and on the way, Narada Muni gives him a mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and he takes that mantra and he starts chanting and chanting. And actually, he's chanting because he wants the kingdom. You know, he says that my 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 stepmother said that I have no, you know, uh, uh, I cannot sit on my dad's lap. I can never sit on the throne. One day, I want to have a bigger uh, uh, land than my father also. So that is why he starts chanting. So it's a desire for wealth. But when Krishna appears in front of him, he forgets everything. And when God asks him, "Child, you're going on chanting. What do you want?" He forgets what he really wants. He says, "I want nothing." And then Krishna says, "I know what you want. You have to lead. You will be the king of the entire, you know, place. You'll be a big king, and you have to rule for many years. And then when you die, I'll give you a separate loka for Dhruva loka." and there is really one whole land which which is gifted to dhruva you know where he is always able to think of krishna he he says all i want is to think of you i don't want anything even sugriva is actually becomes a devotee because of his desire for wealth the the third type is jignasu one who is very inquisitive like parikshit the king parikshit story is also there where he is going to die because he was cursed By someone, he says, in seven days you will die of a snake bite. He gets a curse. And then he says, I want to know what it is that I should know before I die. I want to know that is inquisitive. 
he becomes a bhakta because of inquisitiveness and the last type is the gyani he is head up of this material knowledge you know this material world and the sciences nothing satisfies him so he wants a true knowledge he is in search of the true knowledge like shukamuni right so these are the four types of people who will surrender to god one so you can think of which one you are some of them reach krishna they want to know krishna because of fame some because they want money they want fame third is they are inquisitive and curious and the fourth is those who are fed up of this knowledge now and they want true knowledge and of all these four krishna says the best is the one who is searching for knowledge because those who are in distress when krishna will remove their distress they might forget those who want wealth when krishna will give them all the money and fame they might forget krishna and those who are inquisitive once they come to know the what they want they may forget but those who are searching for truth you know they usually i think most of you are are in search of the truth and you have come here because you want that knowledge those are the highest forms where they are actually seeking true knowledge they want to get the true knowledge from the scriptures so these are the pictures children of gajendra moksha where gajendra you can see the first picture is an elephant the crocodile has caught his leg and he is offering a lotus and krishna appears you can see draupadi in the second picture the green sari the draupadi uh, saris are going she is in pain and she reaches out to krishna shukamuni in the third picture is in mother's womb he doesn't want to be born because he doesn't want to be in you know in maya and then krishna himself comes don't worry you will not be in maya you'll be in touch of true knowledge and he come he at last gets birth fourth picture is parikshit maharaj parikshit he gets the curse that he will die in 7 days and then he says i want to know i'm inquisitive before i die what is krishna who is god this is the fourth picture down here is of dhruv see krishna appears before the little five year old boy and says you will get the kingdom then is about sugriva here and here you can see the namasharanyam forest and all these sages they are all in search of knowledge okay children So these are the four kinds of people who will search for Krishna, and Jnani is given the most exalted position because he says of all these people, the wise person, Krishna is saying, who is in, who is in full knowledge, he is in union with him and he has pure bhakti. For him, I am very dear, and he is very dear to me because others may forget God. Okay. now let's look at this one is a very important shloka bahunam janmana mante like i told you after many births one who surrenders to me only he will be a great soul so this is one of the prayer which i children i want you to learn okay now here krishna talks about two other kinds of devotee children in this chapter krishna spoke about his energy then he spoke about four people who will not go to krishna four people who will go to krishna and now he will talk about two other people who actually they do pray but they are not in the they, they haven't realized krishna one is the demi god they will do homa they will pray to all so many gods they will pray to ganesha saraswati those uh, they will pray to everyone krishna doesn't say don't pray to them respect everyone but when you pray to the other demi god usually the prayer is to get something you know usually you pray for you know saraswati give me knowledge lakshmi devi give me wealth so usually you will approach demi god who are all other gods but supreme personality for something in return so those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires they want something they are the ones who go to the demi god and they will follow all the rules of the puja like there is one some puja you have to do this way you have to offer Uh, some specific thing, the homa should be like this. All those rules they will follow, and they will do that puja. Men of small intelligence, they don't realize that the aim of life is free from this material birth and death. They are, you know, running after fruits of limited and temporary nature. They worship the demigod. So, can you see, children, in this picture, demigods are actually temporary poor. The demigods are not permanent. They have limited power. It's like you know, you become the prime minister of the country for some time. After some time, the another prime minister. So Indra is not a permanent person. Indra means it's a position. Varuna, the lord of water, is a position. And these are all temporary. After some time, they have to come back into the earth and start 
again you become free only when you realize krishna and uh, you cannot destroy your own karma lots of desire why are they why do people worship demigods because they have desire because they don't have enough intelligence to understand krishna and what is the result if you worship a demigod you will get wealthy you may get knowledge you may get beauty you may become rich and powerful but it's all temporary and you go to the planet of the demigod if you worship the demigod okay because demigods are just agents of god so we cannot equate krishna to the demigod intelligent people will be seeking the all powerful krishna always some people think that god does not have form but they take form but that is because they don't see that krishna is also actually a person okay final let's come to the last four shlokas and we have only 3 minutes left who can become a devotee krishna will tell us in the last verses who can become a devotee of krishna he says o arjuna o kain of bharata o conqueror of kokpo all living entities are bewildered by duality okay we are bewildered or we are carried away our mind is carried away because of two things desire and hate when we desire something immediately we like something we don't like something this duality is what bewilders our mind and doesn't allow us to see krishna so what should we do nisha what should we do to remove the illusion of maya we should understand that we should be we should understand above the Uh, uh, ichcha and dvesha, desire. desire and hate. You should not have desire. You should not have hatred. You should be okay. okay? That is how. So, if you desire something, then you hate something else. Then duality will come, and Maya will cover our knowledge. Okay? This is dwandwa. Desire makes you like something, and it will make you hate something. So, person who acts piously in previous life. whose sinful actions are eradicated become free from this duality if you are able to you know keep krishna in your mind you can become free from attraction and desire and hatred okay forget the past you can wash away the past it's now time for you to start your spiritual journey back to godhead back to krishna so arjuna now this is the last verse of this chapter 7 where krishna says that those who know me as a supreme lord who know me as a you know uh, governing principle of this whole material world who know me as a person who is underlying all the demi gods who knows me as the enjoyer or sustainer of all sacrifices and with single mind they can um just a minute something is going to over and something is going to yeah and the last verse krishna says that if they know me as at the time of death they will be able to reach supreme god and be free from all rag dvesh and you know hatred anger uh, attachment so in the next chapter in chapter 8 krishna will be talking about how you can um, you know what is the final exam how you can pass in the final exam of life okay that will be in chapter 8 So in chapter seven, these are the things we did. It's already eleven, so I'll do this next class. And next week we are going to do um, how to attain Krishna and how to prepare for the final exam. All right, of life. And I want you to think of how will you convince a friend that Krishna is the supreme God? Can you do that? And since it's eleven, these two shlokas which I want you to learn, I will post it in the group seven point one and seven point nineteen. and we'll not do it more i just want you all to say hare krishna and attend the quiz okay i'll just post the link of the quiz i want you all to try the quiz and say hare krishna once with me everybody put your hands up hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare 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 rama 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 All right, so I am posting the quiz link in the in the WhatsApp group. Um, have a nice day. Does anybody have any questions today? No. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, what's your question? Ma'am, I have the questions. Wow, wow, where will will 
the singing classes will start the singing classes will start from next uh, coming saturday 9th july on zoom i will add you to a whatsapp group in fact okay, i will send one message in which there will be links to whatsapp group you click on the link and you will join the singing class okay ma'am okay it will be on zoom only ma'am please send my mama also i'll send the uh, add your mama also okay, okay ma'am yes ma'am send the quiz link ritika yes i was trying to copy but i don't know why i did not copy i'll just copy it and paste it so shall i end the meeting now uh, ma'am ma please ma send the poster yes i can you i'll send you the poster class. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mathali. What is your doubt, dear? Ma'am, uh, next Sunday I couldn't. I can't join why? Because I'm go. I have uh, relatives some things. I have to go there. Oh, okay. So All next right. time. You can watch the. Uh, you can watch later the class which I'll post on the YouTube link. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, I have shared it here, and for some reason it's not pasting in the chat. Anyway, I'll paste it later. So, thank you, everyone. See you next Sunday. Please join me next Sunday. Hare Krishna, children. Hare Krishna, ma'am. Hope you're enjoying the students and the classes. Bye. Yes. Bye, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, Nisha. Ma'am, you not sent in the WhatsApp. Yeah, that's what I told you. I was trying to. Pasted there, but it's not getting pasted. I'll I'll try. Or maybe after I close this meeting, it might go. I'll try. I've now sent it in Zoom. If you can click in the Zoom chat also, you can go there. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bye. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare